Welcome. Thank you for stopping by here tonight or this morning. Here on TikTok Live, I bloom to my house. I go by bloom. And who is this? I can only see the writing, right? I decided to do Unwind and Relax with Gloomy by Alive. Decided to shake it up. Y'all know how it is, you know, when you get in a routine of doing things a certain way. It's like, okay, let's, let's bring the element of shock here a little bit. So what you guys are seeing I'm going to adjust the view probably here in a moment, but what you guys are seeing is me. I'm actually in my room, laying down in a bed, and you guys are just happening to see the view of my um, balcony bed, but I'm literally right here, laying in a bed. Nothing but smooth sailing. I, I felt like... After everything that most of us are probably feeling and going through, right? Transitions, moon phases, releasing, letting things go, new beginnings. Sometimes it just like a lot, right? And every now and again, we need to just like... <sighs> Nothing but smooth sailing. All right, like nothing's wrong with that. Embracing, relaxation, sensuality. I, I can already imagine where some of y'all are going with this, you know. Um, nothing wrong with that. But that's not what this is. I just wanted to share like some more, you know, Bloomy's life outside of Walking in the park. You guys see me walk in the park all the time. Um, going on rants, right? What I do. But I thought I'd share another side of me. Because I still feel like it's equally as important as everything else we do. Because we're still human, yeah. Part of it. That balance, yeah. Yeah. I know I'm gonna have to cut the music off because there's like um uh copyright issues and totally blows to me because I'm like man the way technology is nowadays we gotta ask for everything, but whatever. <laughs> I wanted to create this element, this this atmosphere of um Nothing about healing work, nothing about, you know what I'm saying, processing, because plenty of us, we're doing all of that, and that moon energy is still here, but to take the edge off, like that relaxed sensuality, and I wanted to see what was on y'all's minds tonight, um, anybody that may come in, if I can actually ever be able to read <laughs> here, this tiny writing, because I sent y'all some hugs and kisses and some smoochy faces and some high fives um somebody said hello bloom thank you whoever said hello there thank you for stopping by this early morning most folks are asleep you know depending on where they are on the globe so i didn't really expect many to be able to come on but um 
thought I would come on anyway and do unwind and relax. Hmm. Nothing but smooth sailing. Right? Everything beautiful to me. It's my delight to have you. You gotta be a little bit older to know about that. Y'all youngsters, y'all don't know nothing about that. Heisley. That Heisley Brothers, baby. <laughs> Kitty. Look, y'all, I ain't high. Some of y'all probably gonna come on and say, is she the high? What's wrong with her? <laughs> no, no. Not high. Actually, don't do drugs. Not, you know, no forms to you if you do that, but this came natural for me. And just relaxing and just tapping into all that softness there. But so I'm gonna shift the uh, camera here, and um, I did bring uh, two of my, well, one of my kind of naughty, kind of naughty decks, decks, Carol decks, <laughs> and then an another. <laughs> But to tap into some soft energy, you know, like, okay, so what are your fantasies? You know, what, what do you want, like, for your next relationship, you know, in terms of the softer things, the 3D, the, the part that's like the ice and not the cake, you know? Yeah, we know it's more than about all that, but, you know, that's equally a part of it. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here on the Earth to experience the 3D. It's a part of it. You know, it's about that balance. At least that's my resonance. It's about that balance, man. And so I thought I would do, you know, like, okay, so what's your fantasy? You know, kind of tarot card read, pull, and then perhaps the next person that's going to be in your life. Um, or for some of you, the person that's in your life right now. Many of you are dating. Many of you are in relationships. And, you know, to see, like, hmm, what do they fantasize about? What do they want to do and I'm going to keep it you know PG of course well PG-13 I mean <laughs> the best I can and um, maybe that'll get you in a more relaxed mood and and then y'all going off to sleep depending on where you are on the globe let's see <sighs> I'm going to get some other music that perhaps doesn't have any copyright um issues here so we can still have some background because you guys probably can't hear the water at all I don't think I'm close enough for you guys to be able to hear it but um let's see and what's the song let me see I was digging that. Hmm. I realize I have people come on that are not necessarily into that old school, you know, R&B stuff. Um, so we'll just leave that. I'm just going to switch gears here and move the camera. Man. I really do, though, hope y'all are doing all right, considering all things. Yeah. Let me see if this is going to work. Hold on. One second. I'm trying to get it to where y'all not seeing crazy stuff here. Um, give me one second. It's beautiful food. I'm gonna move this big old bar out of the way. Y'all don't need to see that, right? Like, what's that? <laughs> hold, hold the telephone, y'all. Uh, I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna fix it. Just give me a second. Oh, help me. Help me. These things are harder than they look, y'all. I'm just gonna tell you that. It seems like it's soft, but it ain't. It's hard. No pun intended. 
for my fellow masculines out there. I'm going to be nice. When I say my fellow masculines, I mean compadres, counterparts. You know, I shouldn't have said fellow because now it's going to confuse people. I'm a girl. Natural born woman. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Have a son. Hello. <sighs> All right. Is that helping, you guys? I'm not making it worse. Give me a second. Bear with me, you guys. This is what happens when you wing things, you know? Now you got to go through all this awkwardness. To hell with it. <laughs> to hell with it. See, this is where I can use some masculine energy right now to fix this for me. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. And then y'all gonna see the big old lampshade. I'm sorry. I know y'all like, she messing up our maid. on guys if there's anybody even here just bear with me nothing but Can't sing like them though, you heard? I wish. Almost there. See, look at ooh, y'all. We making some we, we, we getting it. We getting it. Yeah, baby. I'm getting it. We're almost there. So start maybe bringing to mind. Start contemplating if you haven't already. And then if I do this, it's just going to help. See. Maybe not, but anyway, let's roll with it. So unwind. What's your fantasy? For your current relationship or dating ship, if you're in one, or the one that you are manifesting into your life. What's on your mind? And we're talking about the softer things now. We're not talking about the big picture, the grand scheme of things. We're not talking about, oh, I want them to be wonderful or their, you know, uh, goals and aspirations in life. We're talking about the very, very 3D, the very, very mild or softer things, the icing on a cake. That's what I call it. I call the 3D aspect the icing sensuality of it, the connection, the physicality, the physical touch, the physical intimacy. It's the icing, at least to me. It's not the main meal, it's not the main course, it's not the main dish, but it's the icing. And it also helps us to like connect to our bodies when things are right, you know? Intimacy, physical touch, it helps us to connect to the body and the 3D experience and the pleasures of that. And there's there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. You know, and I feel sometimes the spirituality or 
people like myself or people who are in these industries, you know, because of what we do and the things that um, our platforms are are about, it almost gives us a little bit of a bad rap in that there's an appearance that everything is always about, you know, the ascension, the spirituality of things, the healing, which is essentially, you know, our lives, but that's not balanced, but that's all it is. We wouldn't have decided to carnate on Earth school and in the physical form if we didn't want to experience all of it, and that means sensuality. So, let's do it. Let's your fantasy. Let's your fantasy. Collected. I don't know if y'all can even see my hands, it's so dark, right? My special naughty bit. Naughty. For those who want to know, tap into their fantasy as well as the fantasy of either someone that they're already dating, husband or wife, or someone that's going to be coming into their life, the person that's manifesting, that they're manifesting, perhaps even somebody that's watching you, or that you're watching. Mm. Mm. The Wheel of Fortune just fell out. At the bottom of the deck, I'm going to see if I can show you guys. You may not be able to see it. No, huh? I need some more light. Maybe if I cut on the TV and just turn it down, maybe the TV light will help. Let's see. I didn't want it to be too bright. that helping? Nope. Yeah, it is. Hopefully y'all don't see my big head, so let's see. (laughs) Now, let's see. Uh, Oops, sorry. Nope. Well, of fortune. I may not be able to show y'all the cards since it's dark, so I'll just talk about it. So the Wheel of Fortune came out. The bottom of the deck, we have... We got the Two of Cups. But see, this is the Naughty deck, so it gives like a whole nother spin. So for some of you, your intimate fantasy is... You want a whole new overhaul. (laughs) With this Wheel of Fortune there, okay? You want a whole new... You want to explore. You want a whole new type of sexual experience for some of you. Um, Maybe you feel like there needs to be a refreshing or just there's more to explore. Not in terms of like people necessarily, but just feeling like there's so much more to sexuality than what you have experienced with this Wheel of Fortune like flipping out and you're looking for like a turn of events. You're looking to have um, a sexual experience that is completely fulfilling with the will of fortune. And I'm saying that because it was paired at the bottom with that two of cups and that's water energy. So that's about emotion. It's about two people. So many of you are looking for a that physical, sensual, intimate experience, but that is coupled with art and emotion. Um, yeah. Yep. Then after that, you got the Ten of Wands in reverse. And so you guys are wanting a sexual experience that feels natural, that flows, that feels balanced that feels um, 
like both people involved are equally fully present and equally fully, you know, giving and taking and participating. People that know what they're doing, people that are patient, sexual explorers. Oh my, five of cups in reverse after that. So you certainly wanted something that's not going to be disappointing. I'll tell you that. You want something. <laughs> We have fire and water here. Um, you're wanting something that is certainly going to be fulfilling and happy here. Um, four of Pentacles is also in reverse. So, you know, that's earth energy. And in that, you all want someone that's able to let go sexually, not hold back with you, to not be afraid um, to explore. Wow, this is interesting for you guys. Yeah, what's the fantasy though like? Mm. Mm. I will say this, and I'm gonna have to say it as as delicately as I can because in this deck we have the four of wands. In this deck is um, y'all may not be able to. <laughs> I'll just tell you. All right. This is the Four of Wands. There's a woman sitting on the edge of a table and a man going to heavenly places. Right? <laughs> oh, some of y'all, no matter if you're masculine or feminine, but the, the gist of what I'm picking up with that is y'all are wanting someone that um, takes delight in that like a meal <laughs> Ooh, lordy what y'all on mighty night and then with the six of pentacles here oh my um, in this deck okay so some of y'all want to play dress up or like role play here um, but you want something balanced, you want role play, fantasy, maybe, uh, maybe you want to dress up in some, you know, special gear here, or you want that person to, hmm, now let's see this potential person or the person you're with, because it is, I realize I'm dealing with a lot of people or potentially collected energy. So let's see what's on name mine. What's on name mine? I'm talking about intimacy tonight as we unwind and relax. Hmm. I am at it, y'all. You know, sexual experience with depth like that. Man. And that's what I call fireworks. When heart is involved with sex, man. All I can tell y'all is that. It's a different kind of experience, even when it's mine. It's different. There's different energy about it. So let's see. Those that y'all, you know, if you're already dating somebody, if you want to know what their fantasy is, if you're in a relationship, marriage, or the potential person that you're manifesting and manifesting you that's coming in. Let's see. Ooh, we. As I'm cutting the deck, we got the star, Major Arcana, and then the Two of Cups again. 
inhales and sexual healing. Mm. For, ooh, for some of the people you all are manifesting or with, their fantasy. Wow. Some of these people that you all are manifesting or with feel like or will feel like with you is sexual healing. Like something about your sex with the star card. Hmm. Wow, okay. Ooh. Let's get their fantasy. So they kind of feel like the collective has a sexual healer, huh? Yeah. That can be quite potent and addictive. All right. Those that the uh, collective is manifesting or vice versa, I think there's sexual The other one just flipped out. Let's see if this one does. What's their fantasy like? Fantasy. Ooh, okay, so y'all, check this out. Six of Swords just came out. Let me see. Y'all don't need to see it, do you? Six of Swords. Their fantasy. I'm looking at this card the way it is in this deck. So for some of them, yeah, I'm going to show you guys. See that woman back there? Legs open. And then if you look down to the right, there's like a person. <laughs> this is air energy. So some of them are fantasizing that or will fantasize that you'll kind of just they're trying to come to calmer waters right their fantasy is they're trying to move away into calmer waters in their life and then they come towards you they come towards you but in this fantasy, you're just sitting here like this woman. You're not saying nothing. You're sitting there ready and waiting. And that's their fantasy. That they just come on to the calmer to the calmer waters. And and I I'm laughing, but it makes sense. So maybe some of these individuals are going through some things. Maybe if these are boyfriends and girlfriends you're with, or husband and wife, maybe they're stressed out, maybe there's a lot going on, or maybe there's rips, whatever the case may be. But this six of swords energy and this deck is like their fantasy is escaping from the chaos into your heavenly golden good <laughs> that's their fantasy uh, because then we have the five of pentacles under that and so maybe they feel left out in the cold maybe there's a drought sexually um, for those of you this is the person that you're manifesting then you know maybe they've gone through a lot and then they feel like with you you know it's gonna be like they just wanna 
they feel like you're drawing them or something because this lady in this, this depiction it looks like she's just drawing them and like it's calming or sexual healing ooh some of them with this oh shucks mmm I'm gonna leave that alone. Wee. So, yeah, let's see what else we have here. Their fantasy. They just want to. And if they're not going through it, then they want to do a fantasy where it's like they're trying to escape from something in this role play and. You're just sitting there when they're trying to escape war or escape a chaotic day or, and you're just sitting there saying nothing, but saying everything with your silence, everything with your disposition, everything with your body language. That's some of their fantasies, straight up. Wow, nothing wrong with it. Ain't nothing wrong with it. What else we got? What the hell? Hold on, y'all. One of them fell on the floor here. It popped. It's the Two of Pentacles. <sighs> I'll show y'all so y'all can see. This deck is funny. You have to really pay attention to the, the uh, imagery. of pentacles earth energy so they want some of y'all to um they fantasize about that what you saw there you know maybe some of them want to they're um i don't know the technical term of it what you call it for the people who um it's a term for people who like to do the outside outside in intimacy act public you know in the public because they're sitting on this park bench in this park yeah so some of them you know are or will be fantasizing about you you know doing things um <laughs> Anything else? What are their fantasies for the collective here? Talking about intimacy, sexual intimacy. Dirty talk, page of swords. Yeah. We got the page of swords to come out. More air energy. So right now we have air and earth. Um, so they want to do some flirting they want to do some dirty talk uh, yeah maybe they're going to want to do that like online or something I ain't going there with this one right here, though. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, listen. Check this out, y'all. This is going to be for a small margin of view, so don't shoot the sheriff here. Don't shoot the... Don't shoot the messenger. Bottom of the deck, I have the full high priestess but guess what? Right after the Fool and High Priestess, which are two major arcana energies here, the Fool is all of High Priestess. But guess what? Right after the Fool and High Priestess, which are two major arcana energies here, the Fool is all about freshness, newness, new beginning. Um, but there are three queens right behind each other.
which gives me the impression here we have a queen of swords, queen of water, queen of earth, literally back to back. Then after that, I have the nine of wands and death. So what I feel like is, you know, for a small, small, small margin of you, um, for a small, small, small margin of you, Just trying to give y'all a little bit of imagery here. Um, some of these people that you all are manifesting or that that are coming in, they have a fantasy of three of three. I'll say it delicately. Because we have three feminine energies: air, water and earth okay nine of wands is uh, in this deck it looks different so they are hoping that you will be open to that that's why I said it's trigger warning because if you're not into that this may sound insulting and that's why I said well don't shoot the sheriff right um that nine of wands next to that death is indicating that they some of them yeah some of them have a fantasy about that and it's gonna want you to be one of these three of you know one of these queens um and that you're not gonna have them to want to you know to put it to death others of you is the total opposite some of you are manifesting people that are hoping that meeting you and being with you will put an end to dealing with all of these options with death, these sexual options. They're fantasizing about finally being free, <laughs> for some of them, finally being free of the burden. Some of them are kind of tired. And they're ready with this death card. They're ready to transform and have a whole new sexual experience with you. With just the fool and the high priestess here. They want to drop the three queens here. And it could be a guy, but it's feminine energy. They want to drop the three queens. It's been burdensome. They're tired with that nine of wands. And they want to put it to death. Because the death is right there, right behind it. And they fantasize about just having a fresh new start with you. Some of you may be this queen of swords. Even if you're not a queen, a woman, or if you're not air element. But that was the first card out of the feminines. And so many of you may be hurt. Okay. Um. <laughs> and with that I feel like they want to have a bold experience with you like you know how she's sassy in this picture like they fantasize about being able to get that sexual experience that they felt maybe that they were getting before from all these various women or men because they're tired of that and fantasize about you basically being all of them in one being a being full being you know you know confident and you know all of that sexually and so maybe they're fantasizing that yeah I go on a new beginning with the collective here and uh, and maybe they're you know will embody all of that in one woman or man and that's what they fantasize about. And others, you know, they want to do that threesome thing. And don't, or doing it and don't want to stop, you know, with that nine of wands and that death card. Wondering that coming to you, collective. They hoping that they don't have to stop putting it to death. <laughs> Ooh, I'm, I guess 2021. Man, I don't understand, but some people, yeah. 
too too much stuff at risk nowadays to be doing that shit, but to each his own. Um Well, there you have it, guys. The fantasy mini reading. Unwind, relax, reflux. Bloomy bloom. It's like three or four in the morning, so thank God I can just, I think I can sleep in the morning, right? Yeah, I'm good. Who I was about to say, oh Lord. <laughs> I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Good for tomorrow, because it's very, very late or early, probably like three or four in the morning. Um, just did, following the other series that I've already done, they're already there, so if you want to participate in it, any of that, you can easily go into the TikTok, the shorts, and you'll see all those days of relax, online, and then the bouncing, gloomy. If you're interested in kind of doing something on the day-to-day, if I'm not able to upload for you guys. Okay. All right. Well, hope y'all have a wonderful sleep. If you're about to go to sleep, maybe it'll take you to a pleasant dream state. Uh, yeah. And just try and think of those different things, you know, those fantasies and just getting your energy and your mind on some of the more, you know, softer things in life and softer things that you're manifesting. And for some of you, since you are dating or you are married or whatever, hell, you can manifest this when we get off here on this live, you know. <laughs> if you want to, you know, it just depends on your your, your situation, but hell. Well, if you got you somebody, you certainly, you know, you certainly can manifest your, and, and 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 set that intention. Like, I'm gonna let go. I'm just gonna release the stress. I'm gonna enjoy this person. You know, not just that part of them, but all of the energy that they bring. Energy, I'm telling you guys, is not as common as we think. So if you're in a situation where you have someone uh, that not only are they physically, you know, pleasing you, but their energy, that that heart, that energy, if you got that man, I'm telling you what, you can't go buy that at the plastic surgery store. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not something. <laughs> I'm just saying, and listen, I don't have no qualms against any of that stuff, hell. You know what I'm saying? I plan to do all that. I'm going to be sheriff when I'm 75, okay? So I don't got nothing against that. But I'm just saying that I know people to this day that probably have had and dated the most handsome men on the earth. Um, you know, some of the most handsome and, you know, physically aesthetically pleasing or some of the most seemingly beautiful women but it was all mechanics it's a total different experience when it's more than that and I know that the collective I typically channel for is on that vibration where it's like, well, something that you can feel in your soul. Even when you're having fun, even when you're doing that role play, right? But you can still feel it, not just because it's stimulating the blood in certain parts. I don't know about you all, but I have seen some of the most unattractive, beautiful people, or should I say, unattractive, pretty, because beautiful implies that it's from the inside out. So I'll say I have seen 
some of the most unattractive pretty people, some of the most unattractive handsome people because it's just shell, it was all the shell, there was nothing, nothing beyond that, which meant that the sex was that way too. It's all of it. It's like the Black Channel 4, they want it all. And I ain't mad at you. You can have a good sex life and someone with heart. You don't have to sacrifice one for the other. Alright, alright, you guys. I'll chat with y'all later. It's been you guys so much fun on my. Um. Somebody says, I'm sorry, you guys. I wasn't even looking at the screen. My bad. So sorry. Half the time, you guys, I don't even be halfway looking at the screen. I don't even if, if somebody's still there. Somebody asked if I was a twin flame. Yes, I am on a twin flame journey. Um, somebody says, good morning. What are you, what are you doing here? <laughs> right? I know, right? This was the unwind of life for Bloomy, but... Yeah, I am on Twin Flame, if I see that correctly. Um, I'm not with my twin, though. Um, I was thinking about... I'm waiting for my guidance. I try to go by guidance with certain topics because they're they're very sensitive and they're very raw and revealing. So that's a very... Those are delicate areas to me, but I do feel guided at some point, I don't know how soon I, I am being guided that I will have to share my twin flame story. I will have to tell about it um, to help make sense of it, you know, at least for the collective that uh, follows me to make sense of what that really looks like, what it feels like, the way it unfolds, um, the truth behind it versus the, um, the hype that you see in Tarot community about it um, because it's a lot of information it can be like information overload and so I'm being guided to share it from the most raw place that I can based on my experience as well as what I've come to learn about it in my studies and um, that's why I'm really waiting for that green light because it's going to be quite revealing and um yeah so that's gonna be yeah you guys yeah some of y'all gonna drop your mouth like what um and i'm also guided to share um stuff like people don't ever want to really you know so people don't want to share you know, who wants to share all of their raw stuff, but um, a part of my ascension journey, so which means I have to share, I can't just share the, the fluffy part, I can't, you know, that's my resonance, that I'm not that way, I'm not designed that way, to just share the fluffy stuff with you guys, like, oh, it's wonderful, and look, look at me, I'm wonderful now, like, it's, it's like, no, you gotta tell you have to tell the story. You have to tell the truth. You have to tell your journey. You have to tell. Even if people's feelings get hurt, you know, you'll have to do it in a way that, you know, protects you from any legality. But you have a right to tell your story, though. You have a right to do that. It's a part of honoring the story. And it's a part of um, helping people to understand where they may be. You know, I'm guided to do it for that reason because... When you're going through these different things, shit don't be making sense sometimes. And it don't be all, you know, kumbaya and trees and shit. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm so an earth girl. Y'all, I'm telling you, most people who've ever gotten to know me know that. What I'm about to show you right here. I'm all earth, baby. I'm an earth girl. I love nature. You know, I love you know, trees, all that good old stuff. I connect with earth. I clear my energy that way. But I'm aware of the process. Like, yeah, but 
everything. That's not the, the deal. You got to do the journey. You got to do the work. You, you know, it's more than that. It's more than that. There's days of a lot of tears. A lot of tears. A lot of um, twin flames are whether twin flames are whether they're aware of it or not twin flames are very old old very very old so they in this incarnation they deal with more than people that are not on twin flame journeys this is why a lot of people can't relate to them, can't understand them because they did not come with the weight. They didn't come with that. So as far as they know, you know, they're like, well, what's the big deal? What the hell? You know, <laughs> as well as, you know, I, I've, uh, I found out in my studies of, with astrology that certain zodiac signs like the there's a method to all of it it's not just happenstance and that um, the younger what they would deem the younger zodiac signs and you guys can look into this yourself but they tend to be more immature even if they're older it's trippy to me I find it fascinating but it explains so much I'm like, oh, and then you start reviewing your life and then you start looking at different people that have been in your life and then it's like clicking. It's like light bulbs are coming on. Like, oh, well, that makes sense. So they wouldn't even have the capacity and it's not meant to be condescending, but it's like their level is based on their birth chart and whatever they carnated for. So there's some things that are just not going to click just not twin flame <sighs> funny part though about that as well is when a twin flame goes rogue twin flame goes karmic they live a pretty hellish life um, worse than it ever was and worse than it had to be yeah because it's like they for, they forfeited the reason that is if you think of it in terms of a contract they basically forfeited the reason they carnated because that's a contract is something that was set up for their carnation and then when they get on the earth and you know for whatever reason they go rogue maybe it's due to pain due to conditioning due to they you know clocked up too much karmic debt and so they're stuck in some kind of karmic loop like the matrix on the train and shit can get off the train on matrix i don't know if you guys remember that one um but you would meet them trapped and that's oof, oof. even if it looks like on the surface like that they're okay they don't be okay i'm telling y'all they don't be okay man they be hell um, because then they just, then they give it these karmic energies that's essentially trying to destroy them um, so that they don't fulfill the mission they don't fulfill why they came and usually um, so that they don't fulfill the mission they don't fulfill why they came and usually all this stuff is subconscious and that's why I don't really like to talk about it a lot because some of this stuff is way over people's heads, way. And I don't mean it to be disrespectful, but not everybody is there. Not everybody is into that. Not everybody has made those connections. And so um, that's why I try to stay away from some of this stuff a little bit. But I am guided that I will be getting a little bit more into it and, you know, for those who resonate with those types of things. But, um, yeah. So if you are on a twin flame journey, whoever you are out there, um, 
love and light to you, <laughs> especially if you're the awakened one. Twins rarely ever ascend um, or awaken at the same time. That rarely ever happens. And when I say awaken, I'm not talking about the things that we look at in the world to try to deem someone as someone that has a wall. We'll look at the physicality. Did they graduate college or get a house and they have a six figure income? Or, you know, we really go very 3D. But if you think logically about that, there's a lot of rich people that went to college, pay your bills, got a home, you know, and nothing's wrong with that. That doesn't mean you're an awakened soul. Nation, twins traveled a very long time together. Their soul has nothing to do with the stuff that we equate these love connections to. Twins are awakeners. Their provoked purpose. Um, Yeah, so their soul level is higher. Just like with children, when your children are older and they know better than the six-year-old, the 16-year-old deals with a little bit more repercussion. So it is with twins. A karmic for somebody, soul level one or two, they may not suffer the same way. They suffer though, but maybe not to the same degree. Yeah, so that's just a little info since you guys asked, but I'm going to go now because I, I need to close my eyes. I really think it's my twin. That's another topic we'll talk about on another day. Twins feel each other. They feel their energy. It's weird. They can be on a whole across the water somewhere else on the earth and y'all still crazy shit. I'm telling y'all it's crazy. I've never experienced nothing like Never. I'm 45, you guys. I've lived life, okay? I've lived, trust me, I've lived, I've had diverse experience, background, you know, in relationships. So, you know, um, I've, you know, I ain't, I ain't lying. I'm trying to tell y'all. I've had it all. I've had, you know, I've had handsome, you know, well-to-do, well-off men. I've had, you know, um, you know, ones that are not so well off. <laughs> so handsome, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I've had different, you know, socioeconomic classes, you know. So I, yeah, my experience is a very diverse experience. And, um, and with that being said, I still am tripped up about how <laughs> I still haven't experienced nothing like Twin Flame Journey, nothing. And um, it's not what people think, you know. Some people go, oh, you know, they just met somebody that put it on them. They put it on you. No, 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 and no. No, and no, and no. Okay? <laughs> I'm just like, that's not it. <laughs> Though the sex with twin flame journeys it is like nothing else. I ain't going I ain't even gonna perpetrate on that. That's that's a part of it. That's what makes that's a part of the twin flames. Yeah, it's in the genetics, it's in the DNA. That's all I can keep telling you guys. If if you wanna equate it to um hitch. Not hitch, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Hancock, Hancock. Hancock, Hancock in home chick, like that intensity. It's because it's the it's in the the quantum whatever the hell you know what I'm saying. It's like the soul's imprint. So it's something you can't write it down. It's just it's science. It's like she told him. I think it's because you know the souls are so old and there's so much science behind what's happening that we can't really explain properly with words and if you try people still think you're not so so um you try to go do the core cutting you do all the energy you know what I'm saying? you know how to do. 
5D level, you know what I'm saying? That's something that was established before we came here on this, before we even jacked up shit in the 3D. Or we was even, you know what I'm saying? So it's something that you just will always probably have with you. And it's something I think twins have to learn how to adjust and live with, especially the awakened ones. They eventually get into a space where they know how to separate all of it and go on in life and still deal with that properly and have a full fulfilling life, whether they ever see the twin again or, you know, they can deal with it. The unawakened twin, the ones that, um, the ones that refuse their process, their healing, their transformation, they're a little bit more haunted. They end up getting a little bit more haunted in a very negative way. Because it's like, ooh, you know, your destiny or, you know, what was meant for you is kind of lurking over you and you forfeit it. So they they deal with it from that perspective. But the awakened ones, they go on to have a very full life. They go on to um, have other experiences. They call in other soulmates. They, you know what I'm saying, a very fulfilling life because they aligned with their contract. They aligned with the mission and why they came, even if they have another soulmate. They, you know what I'm saying, a very fulfilling life because they aligned with their contract. They aligned with the mission and why they came, even if the other twin didn't. So I tell people that all the time. I don't get it twisted. The mission will be fulfilled and it can be fulfilled. It only takes one of the twins. It was meant for them both, but it only takes one of the twins to totally align and integrate their masculine feminine energy and surrender to source and align with the contract. And when they do that, there's a protection and there's a blessings and, you know, their manifestations are, are lighter and things like that. So we never have to feel disempowered. And that's something you guys really talk about. Um, because I just have to debunk all of this foolish shit about twin friends. Like, no, nah, let's come on. We ain't going there. Like, you know what I'm saying? Let's call shit what it is. And there's a free will um, aspect at play with twins as well. So, anyway, that's enough. That's that. I'm getting delirious now. Um, as I always do when I get sleepy, I get super delirious uh, for their lives and their journeys and as are you they have a free will to participate in whatever they wish as do mission that you feel like your soul is here for okay whatever that is. mission that you feel like your soul is here for okay whatever that is and for twins it's about ascension it's about awakening they came to awaken they're awakeners but they first have to go through that themselves. And when they refuse it, they're forfeiting. That's just it, okay? And they do it in a unique way. So don't think that I'm trying to imply that all twins have to do the kind of stuff in which that I'm doing. That's not what it is. Twins sometimes do things that are opposite each other. One may be an artist, the other one, you know, science, you know, it's just, the mission, though, is all about awakening, evolving the betterment of humanity. There's always some kind of core mission there that they share. But when people choose to opt, that's you misunderstood for sure. Because you need toxic energy. So, language, not right necessarily as divine. How are you divine and you're cheating everybody out of shit? How could you say that in one breath? How are you divine? What'd you say? Threatening people, manipulating people, bullying people, lying maliciously. Because why? They're in alignment with their divinity. But a karmic energy, frequency, someone that is stuck in that template will never be, never, never, can't. I'm just saying, I ain't going to be doing that. 
divinity. Don't resort to those methods. To try to have somebody or keep somebody or to bring harm on somebody that they're jealous of because they want to have some. Like, that's all lower level energy. I don't know why I'm still saying it, but I'm going to say it. Because people got this shit all messed up. <laughs> you ain't no damn divine. You know, and acting like that. You, if you were, you didn't demote your ass to karma. <laughs> Even if you were, because it's a free will, you can choose to live in your divinity, or you can choose. Mm-hmm. And when Source steps in to start showing you things, you know, in terms of. Hey, listen, check this out. You got some inner child healing to do. You, you fucked up. You, we need to work on that. And you got, <laughs> got some addictions and, you know, deal with that. Uh, line with your divinity, the wholeness of you, so that you can't continue to be exploited by karmic energy. The protection is in the surrender to the divine. The protection is in the awareness. But when we stay stuck in those energies, we stay stuck in the illusion in which those energies are creating as well. And I'm not gonna lie. I know emphatically that it can be a challenge to get out of karmic energy. I'll do another video after I talk more about my personal uh, twin flame journey. I'll do uh, some of them stay locked in, and that's because the masculine template, they're dealing with not only their own inner child woundings and the things they carnated with and their family lineage and, you know, yada, yada. They, they're dealing with the general collective masculine distorted template. So wounds and toxicity and to bring about and hurt. And especially like if she's African American and she's got some other things on top of it that's very um, demeaning to women. So she, that's her place. She didn't get no payoff. Her shit been like pain, suffering. You know, the masculine he had pain and suffering due to his lineage, you know, his family and maybe how he grew up or, or whatever. But in terms of him being a masculine, he had payoff, especially if he was of another culture, if he was, you know, if he wasn't black, I'll just say that shit. <laughs> so he, he benefited off of the toxic, distorted masculine template. Because the distorted masculine template is what has ran Earth for a while, which is why we have greed, why we have overaggression, has ran Earth for a while, which is why we have greed, why we have overaggression, just the list goes on and on. So but if he's benefiting, i.e. women or people that are still insecure, their source has to allow them to, um, source has to allow masculine to go round for round until they um, crash and burn, basically. To connect the dots to what's important in life, you know, and they go through their versions of pain as they continue to chase materialism eventually disappoints them too because it's built on the illusion it's built on the 3D matrix grid and so very interesting from the outside to come through the uh, speakers but I don't think it is so 